What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video. So in this video, I'm going to be going over how to pick which overclock you should do on your NVIDIA graphics card in order to make sure you get the most performance and lower latency in general whenever you're playing GPU intensive titles. Now we're going to be comparing a manual overclock versus a NVIDIA automatic overclock, which is from their new app, where it basically if you let the app run and do its thing for 10 to 20 minutes, it does an automatic overclock for you. We're going to see how much this compares to a manual overclock that is definitely going to get you more performance compared to stock performance. We're going to see how this compares to the automatic overclock and see if it's even worth it running that automatic overclock or just spending the time and getting the manual overclock done. We're going to be using Call of Duty benchmark in this video, which in my opinion is probably not the greatest way to show show the massive differences between a manual overclock and stock performance or an automatic overclock and stock performance but it's going to be probably the easiest way to identify that you're getting more fps whenever you're increasing the clock speeds on the graphics card and the memory speeds on the graphics card so if you're playing any other games other than call of duty this still does apply you will get more fps regardless as long as you get an overclock done you will get more fps as long as it's stable and this just was only highlighted in games that really use your graphics card obviously in a a game like Fortnite on all low settings, you probably won't notice a single difference. Maybe your latency would be a lot lower, but in terms of average FPS, you probably just won't notice a difference. But let's get started with the results compared to stock performance and manually overclocked. So guys, as you guys can see, we have the two screenshots of the Call of Duty benchmark saved right here. I'm not going to run them in this video just because OBS Studio and just any recording software really messes up the benchmark and causes it to bug out. I was getting like 20, 30 less FPS. FPS with OBS running. So I'm just not going to run OBS whenever I'm running these benchmarks just to make it a little bit easier for myself. So as you can see here, this is stock performance on basically my 3090. And I'm not gonna lie, this 3090 is buns. Like this is the worst 3090 I bought. And it was kind of an impulse buy. So just keep this in mind on stock performance, this 3090 is garbage. So here's the performance on the 3090 with basically nothing done to it. This is just stock performance. As you can see, it's reaching a degrees which is terrible and that's of course without 100% fan speed so just setting my fan speed and MSI after burning at 100% that's probably going to lower my temperatures and giving me more FPS so if you have that issue recommend just doing that either way but yeah I'm getting about 258 average FPS on the top here but we're going to mostly look at the GPU mark right here I mean 259 right here on the 5% lows I'm getting 219 FPS and on the 1% lows I'm getting 211 and obviously temperatures are super high now if we go over to after the overclock done this is me getting about 283 average in total and my average fps on the graphics card is 284 my 5% lows are 250 and my 1% lows are 234 and the card is way cooler just because i have an undervolt going on as well along with the 100% fan speed so those two things just lower your temperatures a lot which is why the temperatures are that much lower now if we compare these two i'm getting about 20 more fps 24 more fps just on the graphics card side of things and this is just in call of duty benchmark Obviously in game, I was noticing this way more. The Call of Duty benchmark doesn't really reflect things as good as it should, but I mean, it's a good way to instantly notice if your performance is going up or down. Obviously there is margins of error. It doesn't really matter. All I know is that, that there's a substantial performance increase whenever I'm manually overclocking the graphics card. And if you want to look at the manual overclock that I have going on, I'll just open up MSI Afterburner. So this is a stock performance with nothing done to the graphics card. And as you can see, it's running at 1920 megahertz and around 10,000 megahertz for the memory and on 1080 millivolts 60 degrees on idle obviously is kind of hot so if i load my profile right here performance goes up obviously the undervolt is applied so now i'm at 0.95 volts on the graphics card temperatures drop down because i increased the fan speed 100 percent and i have the core clock kind of maxed out to the point where if i go any higher the graphics card will just instantly crash so this is a super 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 heavy overclock i'm not going to lie this might be unrealistic for a lot of you just because this graphics card i've done a lot to it for you guys just keep that in mind it might not be as drastic as this but there is a performance increase from overclocking regardless of what you do so don't copy my settings before i get started like just don't copy my settings this won't work on your 3090 every 3090 is different and every gpu has different settings compared to a different gpu however i'll give you guys a hint most 30 series cards and most 40 series cards as long as you have good memory on it you should be able to do plus a thousand on the memory clock if you do do that and you're getting 
errors or weird artifacts on your screen or just crashes, don't use it. Just use a lower value like 750 or 500. You do have to stress test these things to so make sure you get a stress test done. But yeah, that's the overclock that I ran to basically get 283 FPS average and get these performance increases compared to stock performance, which again, it was terrible before I did the overclock. So now let's set up the automatic NVIDIA overclock and see how this compares to stock performance and the manual overclock I did. So I'll leave the NVIDIA app linked in the description, but basically this app is going to be a replacement for GeForce Experience here soon. You can clip things, you can use the new game overlay with this, but what we're going to use it for is the only purpose of this video, which is to test the automatic overclock that everyone's bragging about and saying how crazy it is because it's free performance and apparently it doesn't void your warranty on your card. So it's kind of like an automatic stock overclock from NVIDIA for free where you could turn this on, you'll get more FPS, lower input delay just because your graphics card will run faster and you won't void your warranty and you won't break your car. Preferred driver, this doesn't really matter. Just press next. I highly recommend turning this off. Do not let this optimize your games and creative applications. This literally resets NVIDIA settings in the NVIDIA control panel, if you believe it or not. So I've had that happen with a couple of clients and it was pretty annoying. Turn that off. Game overlay, I'm not going to be using it in this video. So press done. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to system. We're going to go to performance. And as you can see here, automatic tuning, it basically finds the best overclock settings for our graphics card and maintains the performance on a regular basis. Now, this is kind of a lengthy process. You do have to turn this on. And then once you turn it on, you have to let the program do its thing for 10 to 12 minutes while it does some tuning in the background, runs some tests, finds out what your limits are for the graphics card and what's the best performance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to revert the MSI afterburner overclock. So I'm running complete stock settings. So I'm going to do that real quickly, close out of that. And then I'm going to turn on automatic tuning and press agree and continue. And as you can see, it says avoid TPU intensive tests. So that means to close out of your, all of your games, close out of OBS, close out of anything that is using your graphics card in the background. If you don't do that, it's going to mess up with algorithm that NVIDIA has for this automatic overclock. So just go ahead and do that and let this run for about 10 to 12 minutes. Once it's done, you can pretty much test the performance. So I'll come back whenever this is done and we'll see how the card benchmark performs after. All right, everyone. So after trying to use the NVIDIA app automatic tuning, it just both times I was trying to use it, I let it run for like 20 minutes because apparently it takes around 25 minutes. I let it run both times. It completely crashed my system. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. I think just because the program is in beta, there are some stuff that they haven't really tuned properly for older graphics card. I think if you're on a 40 series graphics card or if you have tried it in the past and it worked, it's fine to use, but I'd probably just stay away from that. Anyways, I've pretty much found what, what values it was giving people for a 4090. So I just for a 3090. It was giving them about plus 128 on the core clock and plus 200 on the memory. The plus 128, if you are getting that from automatic tuning, that is actually going to help you a lot. Believe it or not, that is going to really boost your FPS. The memory clock is kind of low. I mean, 200 is very, very low. On some cards, you're able to do 1,500. So 200 is very low, especially for the 4090. So that's just to basically show you guys that I've pretty much ran this manually. I didn't use the automatic tuning within the video. Maybe I would have gotten a lower result than these two numbers, but I just copied it over from a different person's results for a 4090 using automatic tuning. So I'm just going to use that program to do this part, but basically this will give you an idea if you should use it or not. So I was actually kind of surprised, believe it or not. I was quite impressed that if you do do 128 on the core clock, which does make sense, you are going to get a substantial FPS boost. I ran the benchmark on the manual NVIDIA automatic OC and I was getting these results. Now, obviously the GPU temperatures are way higher because this is not an undervolt, but as you can see, I'm getting almost the same exact performance, which I was quite really, really surprised by. And if we look at my benchmark, whenever I reran it, I reran the benchmark one more time on my actual overclock, which is going to be profile one, which is very, very hardcore compared to the last one. But as you can see, I'm getting a little bit more FPS on this one compared to the one over here. Here. So I'm getting two more FPS just from doing a manual overclock and I'm getting three more FPS in the lows, in the 5% lows, and I'm getting way less temperatures, which obviously always helps. So in my opinion, if you don't know how to overclock and 
your automatic tuning in NVIDIA doesn't crash your PC or it doesn't really cause any issues, I would use that. Even though I'm kind of really against the automatic overclocks, pretty bad from my experience, but for the NVIDIA one, I'm not gonna lie, if you do let it sit there and let it go through the full 20 minutes, it'll apply an overclock, which if it's not crashing your PC and if it's stable, then you will get more performance. So I'm kind of impressed and I'm kind of just worried that if you do use this, you are gonna have stability issues though. So be because some cars just don't clock as high as this, you either are just not going to see a performance benefit or just not going to have a smoother gameplay experience due to it. So this obviously just depends on your graphics card. Like, I mean, not every single graphics card is going to see a benefit from the automatic tuning. Obviously, manual overclock is always going to be better just because you are able to check out the thermals and decide if you want to undervolt or not. And the fact that you can undervolt with a manual overclock and lower your temperatures by 20 degrees, that's a deal breaker right there. And I would just do that. And the memory clock always helps. You can't really see that in FPS in some games. So I'm guessing the COD benchmark just isn't one of those games that scales with the memory clock, but that does make your memory on your graphics card just run faster so everything that accesses the memory on the graphics card runs faster all right everyone so i've pretty much did some extra testing regarding in-game playing so what i did is i basically loaded up a team deathmatch map and what i did was as you see from the screen i pretty much ran from this starting point all the way around this hallway and this was my running path right here so i'll go through this turn around through here go back and pretty much waited until the benchmark for 30 seconds was over. I did this for each overclock without closing the game. So this is to basically make sure that restarting the game doesn't really make any changes or any of that sort. So if we look at Cat Frame X, which is a tool to record your frames and pretty much see the differences between different configurations, different settings. As you can see, I was getting way more FPS on the manual OC. My 1% lows were definitely way better. So as you can see, obviously the manual overclock takes the crown for this but the automatic nvidia overclock which technically is still a manual overclock because of the nvidia overclock thing didn't work for me as you can see you do get a significant performance boost on either one obviously manual oc is way better it's way more consistent probably as well and your input lag is way better on the manual oc just because you have a thousand plus on the memory or you maxed out your memory clock speed so that's just to show you guys that in call of duty this does help and you can obviously transfer this over to other games that are just as GPU intensive like Call of Duty or even more and you'll probably get an even greater performance benefit there so yeah so if you are interested in the NVIDIA app again just go to the link in the description and download it turn on the automatic tuning and follow the previous settings that I did for that but if you are having issues with an automatic tuning just go to watch my manual overclocking video for NVIDIA graphics card if you guys enjoyed this video leave a like subscribe comment down below if you have seen some sort of performance benefit by turning on the NVIDIA automatic tuning curious to know but in case you are pretty much not hip to the manual overclocks and you just don't want to spend your time doing it yourself or you just don't know how to go watch my videos if you want me to do it for you go book a PC optimization service on my site anyways guys that's gonna be pretty much it for me hope you guys enjoyed peace out